So today I want to talk about a part of travel uh, and especially travel packing that is not oftentimes discussed and I've had a lot of, let's say, problems over the years trying to figure out and sort of come up with my travel kit in this area and that is shoes. Specifically, what shoes to bring or what combinations of shoes to bring when traveling long term like I do as a digital nomad that allows me to be prepared for every type of scenario, every sort of thing that I need to do, whether it be go on a boat or go to the beach or go hiking or go out to a nice dinner or any essentially any sort of thing that I might run into without bringing a bunch of different pairs of shoes. So today I'm going to walk you guys through the three shoe combination that I have found for myself in order to streamline my packing while still being able to essentially have a shoe for every type of situation. The first shoe that I want to talk about on this list is the one that I've had the longest and the one that I've been traveling with the longest, and that is the Nike Tangents. So here they are. I've basically had this exact same pair since 2016 when I started traveling. I've had them in all black every single time, and the reason why I like this shoes is that they are very, very light and they're just really easy to travel with, okay? So first of all, uh, it's just, there's really nothing that special about this shoe. It's just a sneaker, uh, regular type of sneaker shape. There's nothing too crazy about it. And I like that about it because it can do a lot of different things, right? So I can, this is the shoe that I normally uh, use when I'm exercising. This is my active shoe, however, uh, it also has a few different features that are really nice for traveling. First of all, uh, this mesh up here, as you guys can see, is very, very light. There's really not a lot to it. It, it has a lot of perforation around it, which means that your, shoe, uh, your feet are going to be able to breathe very easily in there. And it also means that when I press it down like this, it almost compresses down to nothing. So if you guys can see when I squeeze it down here, because the construction is so soft, basically this is the only part that creates like a lot of vertical space to it. So the rest of the shoe compacts down really, really small, and that makes it really easy to travel with. So I actually put this shoe in my bag. I take the other one. I will just kind of like squish this one down like this, and then I'll take the other one and kind of do the same thing with, and I kind of stack them like this. and they really end up taking not a lot of space. And like I said, what I like about these shoes is that they are super light, they're really good for exercise, and you can also dress them up. So, uh, you know, I'll usually, if I wanna wear these, I, I have black pants on or something like that, I'll throw these on, and I think they look really good. So, uh, they're good for just casual wear as well. The other thing is that because this top here is so light and so perforated, they're actually very quick drying. So there was once when I went hiking on a mountain and I wasn't prepared for there to be snow at the top of the peak of the mountain. And I ended up having to straight up walk through feet of snow and these got soaked. And what was really impressive to me was that by the next day, they were dry and ready to wear. So this shoe is really my exercise and active wear part of my shoe combination. This is what I run in every day, what I take to the gym, and what I will you know, go on hikes with or anything like that. And there have been a few times when I've also taken them to the beach. And they do a really good job with all of that. I get a new pair that's exactly the same every 7 to 12 months. Essentially, when I come back to the U.S., I usually get a new pair uh, and I, I love these shoes. They're really, really great. The only negative I will say is, if you guys can see, I've had these for a little while, and the when the tread wears down, these just become a nightmare anytime that the ground is wet. I almost ate it once. I had the double backpack thing. I had a big backpack on the back. I had a small backpack on the front, and I was and I was wearing these shoes, and it had just rained. We were in Barcelona, and I just about ate it down some stairs uh, because it was wet. So make sure that you get them. Uh, replaced more often rather than too long amount of time because that tread wears down and it get a little sketchy. All right, now the second shoe in my combination of travel shoes are the Vivo Barefoot 
what are these called? The Vivo Barefoot Geo Quartz V1. So uh, if you guys have never heard of Vivo Barefoot, they make these uh, barefoot shoes that are essentially a little bit wider at the front here, uh, and they're very flat. And what that supposedly allows you to do is to train the front calf muscle of your leg, and it also allows your foot to spread out when you step. Uh, now, on the internet, there's a lot of sort of back and forth about are barefoot shoes good for you? Uh, should you get them? Are they beneficial? I'm not really going to go into all of that. I was kind of testing it because somebody suggested that they might be good for uh, a knee issue that I've been having. And to be honest, they are quite comfortable. Uh, I don't really know if they are better than what you should be wearing or like I'm not even going to get into the whole barefoot argument. I just like these. Uh, they're leather. I do like that uh, it is wider up here at the front. It looks a little bit weird, but you kind of get used to it, and they're not that noticeable. Like, I've seen some of these barefoot shoes before that are, like, super wide at the front, and it looks ridiculous. These don't really do that. They are they don't really jump out at you as barefoot shoes. Uh, and, yeah, I really like this. The other benefit of these in terms of travel is that because they're barefoot, because they don't really have a thick sole, you can actually do this with them. Look at that. And you can just fold them up like this and you can put them in your bag if you want to, even though that I tend to wear these on the plane. Now, I like a shoe like this. This is my daily driver. This is the thing that I wear every single day when I'm walking around and it is very comfortable. I like that it's a sneaker and that because it's leather, I can dress it up. So usually if I'm going out to a nice dinner or something like that, this is the shoe that I'm gonna put on. Uh, and I think it really dresses up quite well. There's been a few times when we've gone out to a nice dinner with Sarah and I've worn this with a button down and I've fit in just as well as somebody wearing a nicer, more uh, expensive pair of shoes. Now this is the version one, not the version two. If you go to the Vivo Barefoot website, you'll see they have two different versions of the Geo Quartz. And the reason for that is that the version one has this kind of gray back here, if you guys can see that, while the version two is all white. And I liked this gray back a little bit because I want something that is all white, but I just this, in my opinion, just looked a little bit nicer. When I was looking at the all white version online, it just looked a little, I don't know, a little boring or reminds me a little bit of like a nurse's shoe or something like that. And I think that this gray back kind of fixes that. It makes it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun while still keeping a minimal look. Now, even though I like this shoe, it does have some negatives. First of all, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's already really kind of broken up here in the front. You guys can see there's a whole bunch of creasing up here. And then also at the front, I'm starting to get a whole bunch of marks up here. Now, this isn't super strange for a leather shoe. Obviously, I don't mind the creasing. It's leather. I get it. Leather creases. Uh, I was hoping that this was going to last a little bit longer up front, especially because I've only had these shoes for like three or four months. So I'm not super impressed by the last ability of this shoe. It's breaking down quite a bit quicker than I had hoped. You can also see here at the tongue, you can see it's already breaking down and just starting to look a little bit cheap and, and not as new. So I'm a little unhappy about the fact that these are falling apart so quickly for a $150 pair of shoes. I was really hoping this was gonna last longer. And the other negative is this tread on the bottom is basically useless. It's fine for when uh, the weather outside is dry, but the other day it barely sprinkled, no, it didn't barely sprinkle, it was torrential downpour, uh, and I had to run to get the car. And it was raining a lot, but I was running under cover, so it wasn't super wet, and I just did not feel very comfortable like walking around or jogging in uh, a slightly wet environment. I did slip a few times and I just, I wish that this tread was better, you know? So, uh, but other than that, this shoe is really great for traveling. It dresses up well. Uh, it's nice for a daily walker and surprisingly, my feet don't get very sweaty uh, or stinky in this. I did try wearing these without shoes or without socks at first because they are Vivo barefoots and it was just, I mean, it was terrible. Just my feet just started stinking up and my wife was like, she was like, no, 
Like you need to figure that out. That's gross. So uh, I don't recommend wearing these without socks. Uh, I definitely can't. But other than that, really good pair of shoes that like I said, if you wanna put this in the shoe and not travel with it, or if you wanna put this in your bag and not travel with it on your feet, you can compress this very nicely. And look at that, it does the same thing that the tangents do. So again, very easy to travel with shoe. All right, moving on to the third shoe. And this is not really a shoe, this is a sandal and it is the Birkenstocks uh, Arizona leather uh, sandal, I guess is what you'd call this. Now, you guys have probably seen these before. They're a very, very popular shoe. And the reason why I got this was that I hate flip-flops. I just, I, I despise flip-flops. It's not just about the way that they look. I think that they're super uncomfortable. I just, I don't get it. If you're wear, if you're a flip-flop wearer, I don't get it. They're so uncomfortable. They hurt my feet. They hurt my toes in between where the little plastic thingy goes. And I just think that they look silly and they make that stupid noise when you walk. I don't want to go down the whole thing, but I do want a something, a shoe that is open toed, something that when it gets hot out, uh, I can wear. Or also, if I'm going down to the beach or something, it's ridiculous to go down to the beach wearing sneakers. So I wanted something open toed, and I wanted something that also I could dress up, and something that if I was going to a co-working space or something like that, wouldn't look ridiculous. So this was my answer and so far i am incredibly impressed and super super happy with this shoe now i do not have the uh real leather this is the synthetic leather because it's a few uh, dollars cheaper and i wanted to save the money but after a few weeks of wearing they did break in they did become really comfortable uh and i really like these I can really wear these for miles and miles and they don't hurt my feet. Uh, I don't get any sort of blisters or anything like that now after wearing these for a few weeks. Like I said, uh, the first week or two, I, I did get some like weird blisters on my feet and then afterwards uh, I was totally fine. So uh, I'm really impressed with these shoes. Uh, this is my most recent purchase, but I'm already really in love with them. And I like that I can both take this to the beach uh, and kind of wear them as like a casual thing when I'm going uh, out and it's hot out, but I can also dress this up. There's been a few times when I've worn pants with these, uh, you know, I've put on a button down shirt or something like that, and it's like not looked ridiculous, which I appreciate. So uh, I really like this, I'm a big fan. The one thing that I did have to do to this was that uh, these straps just did not have enough holes on them to fit my foot. I have a bit of like a, like a narrow foot and it's not as tall, I guess, as average. So um, because of that, I had to put in another hole so that it, these could hold my feet really securely when I'm walking and there wasn't a whole bunch of movement. So once I did that, I put in an extra hole myself and they've been fantastic and I've really, really enjoyed these. One of the other pros about this shoe that I found out, and this came from Levi Hildebrand's uh, channel, if you guys have never uh, heard of Levi, I recommend you check out his videos if you're interested in sustainability uh, and specifically what brands and how to shop uh, as a real human being living in the world today while still wanting to stay sustainable. And one of the things that he said that I'd never heard of before is that you can actually resole Birkenstocks. So once you know the shoe kind of fits onto your foot and conforms to your foot, you don't need to then go out and get a new shoe when the soles break apart. You can actually just go and get them resold, which is really nice because you don't have to buy another $100 Birkenstock and then have to go through the process of breaking them in again. You can keep you know, all the leather and the shoe as it is and just resole them. And I like that option. It's a great way to save money, uh, be more sustainable, and also uh, not have to go through the process of breaking in Birkenstocks again. One more thing about the Birkenstocks, I have had friends tell me not to get these super, super wet. One of the things that I had a friend tell me was that uh, he essentially ended up getting these wet a whole bunch of times, and by wet, he literally, you know, like walked into the water with them or something like that a few times, kind of got them submerged or got caught in a very heavy rainstorm with them. And he said that he started noticing the cork starting to break down. So even though cork is a pretty waterproof material or you know not really something that I'm concerned about getting wet, uh, I do guess that constant 
you know, sort of like soaking of the cork and then walking on them can break them down. So that's something to keep in mind. If you do want a Birkenstock that uh, is far more waterproof or water friendly, they do make these out of like a plastic material, but I just don't know how comfortable those would be for walking long distances or using day to day. I feel like I would get some pretty bad blisters if I had to do that. So I went with these and I'm very happy. Now, the reason why I have these three shoes is that I truly feel like these cover 99% of scenarios for me. When I want to do something active, uh, go running, exercise, go for a hike, I bring my Nike Tangents on a day to day basis when I'm just walking around, going to the co working space, getting a coffee, whatever it is, going out to a nice dinner with Sarah. I wear my Vivo Barefoots, the white leather sneaker really does go a long way in, a, in its ability to dress it up and dress it down. So whether you go with the Vivo Barefoot or something else, I recommend getting a nice white, uh, preferably leather sneaker since you can really kind of dress that up a bit more. And then on a more day-to-day -day basis, again, when I don't want to be wearing a sneaker, it's hot out, I'm going to the beach, I'm going to the pool, whatever it is, I bring my Birkenstocks. And they're also really nice because you can long walk long distances in it. So what you want isn't a very specific shoe for a very specific situation. You want to have shoes that overlap and can cover essentially a long range, a large range of situations. One of the things that you might be noticing uh, in this breakdown of videos is that I don't have anything that talks about uh, dress shoes. And I've just accepted the fact that I don't really wear dress shoes that often because I don't have reasons to wear dress shoes very often. Uh, yes, sometimes I need to go to a wedding or something like that, but those situations are so rare that what I've decided to do is if that situation ever does arise and I am somewhere where I don't have a pair of dress shoes, I'm just going to make a fun experience out of it and go buy dress shoes at that location. And if I, you know, don't have a home base in that location where I can like leave those shoes, I'm just going to give them away. I'm going to donate them someplace uh, and just sort of chalk it up as an expense of going to that event. So for that reason, I don't really bring dress shoes. I really rarely re wear dress shoes. And when the need arises for them, it's easy enough to get them somewhere. If you're watching this video and you are interested in a more minimal version of this or what I would do if I wasn't traveling long term and bag space was even more important and I didn't want to bring three pairs of shoes, uh, the next step down would essentially be just the Nike Tangents and the Birkenstock since I feel like these can basically be your everyday and your active shoe and then you just have these that you kind of take to the beach or anything like that. So I'll do these. I might change the color on the tangents just because the all black, I don't know, you look a little too mafia-esque with these, I think. So maybe I would look for something um, like the tangent in a different color, maybe like the black and the white sole that I've seen before, or just a different shoe that kind of matches uh, these characteristics. And if I was looking for even a, a, a far simpler solution where it's just you, you know, you're really concerned about weight, I would probably do the tangents and then I would do uh, flip-flops. I'd get rid of these and I'd do flip-flops, but I, I mean, I'm, I hate flip-flops, guys. I'm never doing the flip-flops things before, but if you're not somebody who is worried about wearing flip-flops or you don't mind flip-flops, then definitely uh, you can do the tangents. If you're really looking to be minimal, you only have one bag, then the tangents, wear them, get on the plane, they're your daily... Uh, driver, they're the thing that you also exercise in, and then you have a very compressed, uh, you know, pair of flip flops that you use for the beach or shower or pool or whatever it is. So, all right, guys, that's it. That is my breakdown of my three pairs of shoes that I combined together for the ultimate travelers uh, shoe pairing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a like and subscribe. I publish new videos every single week all about the digital nomad lifestyle, travel, and what it's like to run a location independent business while traveling the world. So I will see you guys in the next video.